jubilee year. Yeah. They just horn with the horn. They kept on horn. They know the jubilee year is maybe ten minutes more, and the trumpet will sound. But the jubilee year, they just kept on pitching. Hey, whatever they're doing. But when the trumpet sounded, yeah. then they dropped the fish for it and gone. That's it. Just keep on pitching hay until the trumpet sounds. All right. Question. According to the opening, did that anything happen? It, it made a noise up here. A question. According to the opening of the fifth, fifth seal, Moses and Elijah have have to die. What about Enoch? I don't know. I, I, if I don't know, I'm just going to tell you I don't know. See? I, I, don't, I don't know all the answers, folks. I, I don't know. And if I don't know, I'm going to tell you I don't know. If I do know, I won't tell you until I do know. See? But I, I don't know. I've often wondered about that myself. There was Enoch. I see Moses come, and Elisha comes back and they're killed. See? But now Enoch was translated before time. Uh, I've often thought and wondered myself, well, why, why about that? But then here's the only consolation I can say is this. I notice Moses only served God 40 years. See? He was, a, he was 120. But 20 years... The first uh, uh, 40 years, I mean, he uh, was getting his education. Is that right? The second 40 years, God has taken it out of him. And the third 40 years, he served God. All right. But Enoch walked 500 years before God and was blameless. See? So Moses comes back to serve some more time, him and Elijah. Now, that, I don't say that's right. See? I just give you that for a thought, see. But I uh, just to say what part I don't know. I really can't tell you what, what what happened there. Or what God will do. What is the the name of the it'll be on the people of Revelations three twelve. I I don't know. <laughs> he said give them a new name. I, I I don't know what that is, see. It'll be probably made known when we get there, but I, I don't know what it is now, see. See, he is going to do that. he would give them a new name if, if they just know themselves. See? Now, Brother Branham, is there any scripture uh, permitting marriage after divorce? This is very important. It says important. Well, uh, that's the reason it wasn't pertaining to this. Uh, as far as I can see, my brother or sister, whoever it may be, there isn't. Unless your companion's dead, because the Bible said we're bound to them as long as they live. So, as, as far as being any scripture, that's what was asked here. Is there scripture? See, is there any scripture? Not as I can find. See, not as I can find. Because Paul said that the, the married couple, if the companion's dead, then they're free to, to marry whomsoever they will in the Lord. But until then, we watch. You take it until death we part. That's it. You don't talk old over that, you see. So I don't think there is. Now, if, if you found some and it's correctly, why? Well, all, all right. But as far as myself, I, I don't find any. What does see thou hurt not the oil and the wine mean in Revelation six six? It's the Holy Spirit. And we just got through that. Probably somebody you know come in a little late for the message they, what, for the other tapes, you see. Uh, Hurt not the oil and the wine. What does the oil and wine mean? The oil, as we took it, the symbol means the Holy Spirit. See, wine is uh, and oil is connected together in the Bible in worship. See, and the wine, as we put, that's where I got the idea of the stimulation. Wine stimulates, and wine uh, and its uh, its uh, antitype of its natural from stimulation is revelation. Now, just think, what stimulates the church? Revelation. Okay. So, wine, the new wine would be... Now, watch. The oil and wine went together in sacrifice. Went together in, in the church worship. Now, notice. Symbol together. Connected together. You've got a concordance. You look, you see a whole string where wine and oil is met together in worship. If you've got a, a cruisance, why it says up there. Now, notice on this. But now you see, the oil is always the Holy Spirit. 
We find that over in Ezekiel and we find it in the Old Testament. We find it all through the New Testament. Why do we anoint the sick with oil? We anoint the sick with oil because it symbolizes the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon them. See? Also, the wise virgin had oil. The unwise had no oil. Spirit, see? Now, that is the oil. And then the wine, if, if, if the oil represents, represents God, God is spirit. See? God is word. In the beginning was word. Word was with God. Word was made flesh. And that was God. Yeah. Now, then if the word now in, sits here in a, a natural form, now... The wine is a water like that, or the revelation that reveals that uh, interpretation of the word which stimulates the believer. You see, my, they just say, I've never seen it before. My glory, that's what? See, stimulation right? of revelation. I didn't know that till the day sitting there either. See. Now, that's what the, the oil and wine, that was... See, you heard about as the black horse rider. And that was during the time of the dark age. The third age of the, uh, of the church. Notice. And in there, there's just a little bit of it left. Just a little bit. But don't hurt it. And I believe you get that, uh, the, the uh, third uh, seal on tape, you, you would find it there where we explain it in detail. Uh, in detail, rather. Brother Branham is the Lamb's Book of Life. And the book of life, the same book. Sure. Well, oh, that's where all redemption is wrote in this book. See? Their names are in. You say, well, uh, our names put on the Lamb's book of life, Brother Branham. I, I got it put on the other night. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. You just found out it was on there. <laughs> because their names were written before the foundation of the world. See? Uh, that's, it's all the same book. See? Now, Brother Branham, is it true that that uh, every Jew born since Christ came will be saved. And who are the 144,000? Are they the uh, predestinated ones to be sealed with the Holy Ghost? And what is their mission? There's about three questions in one there. But here, the first one is, um, is it true that every Jew born since Christ came into the world, is to be saved. No, nothing will be saved. Only those whose names were put on the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. You are Gentile. That's all. The book holds that mystery. And the book is only unfolding it out, not each one's name, but what the mystery of the book is while it's calling those names. You understand that now? See? The book doesn't say, now, um, uh, leave Ao is to be saved in time of this church age or, or Armand Neville or, or whoever. No, I don't say that. It just shows the mystery, unfolds mystery, what the thing is. But we ourselves, by faith, believe it. That's what I said the other night. Someone said, well, there's no need me trying it. Brother Bram says there's only be one saved out of Jeffersonville. Okay? Now, see, it's showing a parable. That, 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 isn't, the, that, that isn't it. There might be... Thousands saved. I don't know. I hope every one of them saved. <laughs> See, but I don't know. But here's the way I want to believe it. I'm that one. Amen. You believe the same for you. If you don't, then there's something wrong with your faith. You're not sure what you're doing. How can you, how can you walk up there in the face of death when you're not too sure whether you're saved or not? Hmm? How can you go down here and say to this crippled man laying here, blinded and twisted up, Thus saith the Lord, rise up. Jesus Christ makes you whole. Amen. How can you stand that little cold, stiff body laying there that's dead and been dead for hours and hours and laying there cold and stiff and say, Thus saith the Lord, rise up to your feet. You better, you have to know what you're talking Amen. about. Amen. Well, say death claims everything. It's all gone. Yeah, but when the Word of God is revealed and you know it's God, that changes things. Right. Now, yes, these Jews... Uh, not, not all the Jews will be saved. No, sir. They will not be saved. Only those who... When he's speaking of, of Jew, 
Jew, just as the name that was given to him had to left, uh, I believe, Nebuchadnezzar over began to call him Jew first because the tribe of Judah was taken and was given the name of Jew. Now, because they had come down from Judea and they got the name of Jew. But now, Israel is different. Israel and Jew is all together different. Every Jew, every Jew isn't an Israelite. See? No, he's just a Jew. But then Israel, Paul said all Jews will be saved. He said all Israel will be saved. Why? Israel's name, that's, that's the name of redemption all the way back. See? And all Israel will be saved, but not all Judea, Judaism will be saved. See? Just like Gentiles. There'll be a, there's thousands, times thousands of, of people, yes, literally millions of these organizations. And they call Christian, Church of Christ, and all such names as that. That don't mean one thing. Right. Not, that don't mean they'll be saved. People say, now you've got to belong to this or that, an organization, certain organization. If your name isn't on our book, you're lost. Now that's cult. Right. That's cult. See, there's only one way you can be saved. And that is not him that willeth or him that runneth. Him that, that is God who shows mercy. And God, by his foreknowledge, predestinated a church Amen. in glory. That's the one to save. Right. Now, your faith is so anchored there. You say, well, my faith is anchored there. And look like what kind of life you're living. You see, you're not even fit for there. Your anchor's wrong. You got it on sand instead of a rock. Amen. The first little wave will throw it off. Let the word be revealed in something. My church don't teach that. That shows right then you wasn't anchored Amen. on no rock using sand. <laughs> That's right. So now you see, now and the hundred and forty four thousand uh, are they the predestinated ones? Yes, sir. That's Israel, spiritual Israel. Just think there'll be millions of them in there. I don't know how many's in there now, I guess a uh, whole group. But they will not all be saved because they are in Judea. Do you have any idea how many is there now? I don't know, but they'll probably after this next persecution begins to rise, they're accumulating by, you know, I've got a tape on them taking West with me now to, to one of the, the, uh, the Covenant Church, which is at, it's just the uh, old, um, oh, I forget now, it started, the, they have them down there in Africa, Dutch Reform. Uh, it's a Dutch Reformed Church, a covenant is. Now, if there's any of you sitting here, I'll tell you why. You're still holding on to that old Heidelberg Catechism. And that's exactly the reason you're still in the still Dutch Reformed. So you, you might polish up by American name. That's, that's the thing behind it, because your teacher's in that same catechism, the old Heidelberg. You ask your pastor if that isn't right. Okay. So um, now, notice this, 144,000. They are predestinated ones to be sealed by the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. All right, so now if, he's any, now if, I'm, if I didn't answer suit you, well, uh, uh, maybe I'm, I could be wrong. You see, but this, this is the best of my knowledge. You see, this is the best of my knowledge, brother Benham. Uh, as you have travailed or trapped on the serpent seed, oh, oh, I never noticed this one. This is slipped up on me. <laughs> serpent seed this week. Will it be in order to ask this question? My friends have asked me to explain Genesis 4-1, and I can't. Will you help me? It's, it's all for the subject, but anyhow, I, I, I try my best for the help of God. Let's see now. Let me polish up a little bit. I think that's where she said I got a son from the Lord. I, I believe it is. I think he said that. Uh, I'm going to check to be sure, because I said to the night, seven instead of... Uh, 700 instead of 7,000. So uh, it makes me so nervous. See, and you just have to be watching. And the enemy on every side, you, you're conscious of that, you see? Yes, that's it. And uh, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have begotten a man from the Lord. Now, I'm just going to answer you a question, my brother or sister. And I remember, not, not going to you, no. I'm trying to help you. See, I love you. And I love the person who might have been a critical on but I don't think this person is critical. They said, help me, see, because the people please it. But they're just not sufficient to uh, be posted by the Spirit to know what to say to the person that's asking that. Now, she's saying here, what the question is, no doubt, that they're saying, he said she gotten 
this man from the Lord. How do you think life could ever come if it didn't come from the Lord, be it right or wrong? Who sent, who sent Judas Iscariot into the world? Tell me that. The Bible said he was born the son of perdition. Just ask him that. Be like a worm in a lemon, see? See, now, you see? They can't, they can't, it is. Notice. Then, if you want to take them a little more technique, look, Eve talks here, if you want to take it the language, it's here which is written so it's hid from the eyes of fruited. Eve here, the way it's taught, that God was the one that she begotten this son by. And he's a spirit and can't do it. See? I watch here. If you want to know what's that? I have gotten a, a man from the law. See? You can take me and sound any, but it's got to have his right interpretation. See? Amen. Yes, sir. No, sir. If that, then the spirit, and we always follow the nature of our parents. You know that. Look at the baby. The nature. Well, then, Adam was the son of God. Eve was the daughter of God. Right? The first thing of the creation of God, which could not have one speck of, of evil anywhere about evil, wasn't even known. Then why was Cain a liar, a murderer, and everything else? Where'd that come from? Just ask yourself that question. That was a serpent seed. Amen. Don't the Bible say so? Watch his seed all the way down. In that, he becomes... Who does the world belong to? The devil. Who controls it now? The devil. Exactly right. The devil controls the world. He told Jesus, said, see how pretty it is, all the glory? I'll give it to you if you worship me. He is the controller of it. Now, he owns it. Now, watch his children are wise. Devil's children. I'll take Cain's children, if you want to, and bring it right down through the genealogies. And you find out that they were smart men, every one of them. But now when he killed Abel and God gave him back, saith, was a type of the righteous to redeem being dead and raised again. And from there, now watch, not from the first seed of the natural, they die. Now you got your minds open? Amen. The first seed of the natural seed, just ordinary good, it typed the modern church, Abel. In order to preserve that line coming down, that one died so another could raise up. You see? So it has to be rebirth again. You catch it? Amen. Just so you get it, see? Now you're at a perfect time. So even the natural man born of, of Adam, his father, shows that natural trend. Won't work. The natural man don't perceive the things of God. So there was 